What's good, everybody? Drew Weeklis back with another video, and today I will be discussing why I'm worried about The Mandalorian. So let's get into it. It's been a while since The Mandalorian Season 1 has ended, and a majority of viewers actually enjoyed the series as an alternative to the conflicting mess the new trilogy has caused. And for the most part, I'm with that majority. It's easy to access on Disney Plus because of its affordability and account shareability, settings look movie-like, CGI is on point, minimum episodes, meaning better quality for each of those episodes, a likable protagonist, unique plots, it's different from the main trilogy, and it's a great indication for the future of Star Wars. Oh yeah, the music. Music is phenomenal. However, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the success of the series belongs to none other than Baby Yoda. Since the first episode, that's what every YouTube channel, every person has been discussing, even myself. And there's good reason to. Baby Yoda is cute, but not annoying, mysterious, yet loving, baby-like, yet mature. Any scene, any scene of Baby Yoda is infinitely better than every scene of the Ice Age baby combined. But as much as I love Baby Yoda, and I mean, I just recently drew him in my latest video, he does pose some concerns. For the majority of the first episode and also the trailers, I believe that the show would be about Mando working as a bounty hunter and taking any job to fulfill his needs. And I loved it. I loved the fact that there was no good or bad, no Jedi or Sith, no rebels or empire, just those in the middle of it all regular people. I thought the show would depict the life of a person that had no resemblance or connection to any of the trilogies and I thought Mando would finally get to travel to new planets that have no connection to the trilogy. I thought that the show would allow the creators and writers to be as imaginative or creative as possible. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Everything changed when Baby Yoda was introduced. Baby Yoda changed the direction of the show because Mando would not be a great character. He would be part of the good side. He became a protector of a character that resembled another character from the original trilogy who represented peace, wisdom, and kindness. And being wise. While other characters who wanted Baby Yoda or wanted him for their own intentions became labeled as evil characters. The show lost its unique story and now resembled the trilogies. Every episode would start to center Baby Yoda as the main character and not Mando. Mando would not be a cold-blooded bounty hunter trying to survive after the purge of Mandalore or fall of the Empire. He became a father, a parent, a character that would help a whole village survive and make friends on the way. But you can argue that Baby Yoda actually gives Mando a character arc. Instead of being a stagnant character that never develops, he became more caring and sympathetic. But the show could have approached this character development in multiple ways. Using his past, his creed leader mentoring him, his friendship with Cara Dune, or his rivalry with Moff Gideon and Bill Burr's character. These are multiple ways for giving the Mandalorian a character development phase without introducing Baby Yoda so early. Imagine this. Imagine his whole creed, or at least some of them, are killed by a mysterious villain. And Mando has to track that person down and gain his revenge. At first, he can be ruthless and kill anything and everything that gets in his way. But as he meets new people like Cara Dune that show Mando lessons that prepare him for the day that he finds the killer. Mando, when he gets his chance to find his killer, may be more sympathetic and more controlled with his emotions because Cara Dune taught him how to conceal those emotions because she's an ex-rebel and she has sympathy for others. And this character development could have been similar to the way Baby Yoda did for a Mandalorian. But I digress. Either way, this would be a smoother transition into a more developed Mandalorian compared to having that transition basically happen in the first episode where Mandalorian meets Baby Yoda, in my opinion. 
it would allow Mandel to have an anti-hero type of vibe rather than an objective hero or villain vibe. Then in later seasons, they could have introduced Baby Yoda and the connections to the original trilogies. Disney made the best economic decision by introducing Baby Yoda so early, because The Mandalorian was one of the first new features of Disney+. Plus. It would influence more people to keep their accounts after the show had ended. Although it might not have been the best choice storytelling wise in my opinion. But I still love the show and hope for an even better season for season 2. I'm especially hyped for the explanation of how Moff Gideon got the Darksaber that was previously um, introduced in the Clone Wars series. And uh, you know, I'm also watching the Clone Wars season, season 7. And uh, it's pretty great so far. I might do a review on that as well. Anyways, if you like the show, you know, that's fine too. It's all, it, you know, it's all your opinions, my opinion, your opinion. Because it's still a great show, you know, either way. I just like to list my concerns because I'm a concerned viewer, I guess. But anyways, uh, that's the video. Thanks for watching. It's been Drew Witty Clips. You know, comment, like, subscribe, do whatever, or don't do that. It's fine too. Uh, and uh, yeah. It's been Drew Witty Clips, and uh, I'm out. Everybody.